Live from the Student Union on campus, this is Goldmine Live. Your weekly all-access pass inside Charlotte Athletics is brought to you by Ortho Carolina, proud to present the 2017 Charlotte 49ers football season. Bojangles, it's bow time. Your Carolina Ford dealers, go to yourfordchoice.com and enter the Adventure Ready giveaway to win a 2017 Escape or Fusion from your Carolina Ford dealers. Harris Teeter, where 49ers fans shop for groceries. University Eye Associates, and by Wells Fargo. Charlotte 49er fans, show your pride with a customized Wells Fargo debit card. Stop by your nearest Wells Fargo or visit Wells Fargo Card Design Studio online to learn more. Now, here's your host, the voice of the 49ers, Matt Swearag. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Go Mind Live here at the Student Union this week on campus with head basketball coach Houston Fadger and Joby Thomas. I'm Matt Swarad. Uh, got a full hour to talk Niner basketball today. Also joining us later on the show, Colby Lewis, Niner's assistant coach, former Niner player, and the current freshman, Luka Vosic, coming off his first double-double as a Niner this past weekend. So all that coming up over the next 60 minutes. And, Coach, uh, good to see you today. Hope you're doing all right. Doing great, Matt. Thanks for having us again. So uh, last week, uh, so, so close, a couple of games against UTEP here and UTEP. USA. We keep talking about uh, just wanting to get that uh, that feeling of getting a W under our belt, and boy, you came as close as you can come in those two games. Well, you really did. It's it's one possession away in, in both games, whether it's a a grab rebound or a uh, you know a defensive stop, you know, in either game, and you're ten six, ten seconds away from having it in your hands and, and getting it completed. And I, I just really feel for the guys who'd worked really hard to put themselves in position to to be there at the end of both of those games and, and uh, have the breaks not go your way is difficult. Uh, that being said, they've, they've continued to be resilient. They've continued to bounce back and, uh, you know, scored the basketball much better, you know, this weekend than we have in the last couple of weekends. So that was encouraging to see. Um, but you, you, you'd like to see them be able to knock the door down here and hopefully uh, we can turn it around this week. You know, one thing that's, that's a positive coming out of this is that the young guys we talked about after the game on Saturday still working, still getting better, still seeing improvement each game. And, and, and you talked about the resiliency. Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times to sit with the record that we have right now, it's easy just to kind of pack it up and, and go to the house. But they've not done that. They come back to work every day at practice and they're competing hard. They are. And that's, that's, what you, that's all you can ask for as a coach. And I think our, our fan base recognizes that, how hard those kids did play uh, that's something they're to be rewarded for and to be uh, applauded for uh, you know obviously we're all measured by wins and losses at the end of the day but uh, when we, we walk in the locker room and you see those kids have exhausted uh, all their all their faculties towards that game and they've given you everything they have uh, it's hard to be upset with them because they did put their hearts and soul on the line out there and it just like say you know the UTEP game if we grab that one rebound you know we finish that game and the other day if we get one stop that game's over with uh, guy step freshman stepped up made a big shot Jackson did and forced overtime they outplayed us in overtime, but they're that close. And, and you're right, it's, it's been very easy. And we had eight guys, you know, eight scholarship guys playing, and it's been very easy for them to, to tank it and stop playing now, but they certainly haven't done that. And I don't expect them to the next couple of weeks. You know, especially on Thursday night, you come out, and we were talking about good starts, and unfortunately it wasn't one where you got down – Eight minutes in, 29 to seven. They go, okay, this game's maybe over, and it wasn't that case. There's that fight we're talking about, and it's a swing of 29 points because at some point in the second half, you guys are up seven. And uh, but sometimes when you come from that far back, you can burn some energy to get that lead back, but you still had a chance down the stretch, and just unfortunately, um, some things just didn't just didn't fall our way. You talked about the rebound we didn't get in the closing seconds, giving them one more chance, and Paul Thomas hits the the winning jumper uh, that puts them up by one. Uh, but but again that fight and, and uh, you know down 22 that early they could have packed it in very well could have and they continued to fight and like you said put ourselves up seven with around five minutes to go and then had a couple bad you know bad possessions against their zone uh, we're standing on the free throw line with 26 to go with a, with a pretty good player on the free throw line and we missed that free throw to give them the opportunity to get the ball back and then force a stop and then we have three players chasing after a rebound that gets need out of bound and out of bounds uh you know uh, just a sort of an unforced deal there, but they were being aggressive. And as I said before, I'd never get on anybody because we had three people going for a rebound, and that's uncommon. Uh, so I was, uh, I, was, I was encouraged by that. Unfortunately, we knocked it out of bounds, gave them another possession, and, and they took advantage of it won the game. So uh, still, uh, like you say, they're, they're competing. And uh, uh, every day in practice, they, they continue to do that. And, and I'm enjoying coaching them. I'd like to see them have a little more success, obviously, than what they're having to get over that hump, Joby, and try to find a way to get that win that, uh, uh, that, that they're, that's elusive right now. 
Coach, uh, I know uh, another encouraging sign for you guys has to be uh, the emergence of, of some of the younger guys in the minutes. But uh, even a guy like Austin Ajukwa, who we've kind of been uh, waiting um, for him to, to have an offensive explosion to, to play up to the level that he showed even a season ago um, in, in spurts, uh, 24 points. Uh, and so really uh, contributed and played much better these last couple games. He did. He, he's uh, – uh, when he's dialed in offensively, he seems to be doing well all over the floor. Now, he's got to – you know, you got to continue to work to be a complete player. We played uh, two games this weekend. He averaged about 34 minutes a game and had two total rebounds. Uh, a guy like him has got to rebound the ball more for us. You know, that being said, you'll look ahead 11 in one game. So, you, you know, you've got to be able to be productive – uh, on the defensive end, when you're scoring, when you're not scoring, you still got to be a factor in the game. And and uh, that's, you know, you go from, you know, scoring 24 against UTEP, turn around scoring eight and zero rebounds against San Antonio. That's where it's a little bit difficult as a coach because you're searching for consistency. And it's not, not not just him, not just picking on Austin, but from all of our guys. You know, you got we got to be able to go into a game, have a little bit of an idea of what we can count on, whether it's from Najee or Big Jalen or John or Andrew or whomever. Uh, you, you like to know going into a game, you can game plan a little better if you know, well, I'm going to get 14 and 6 out of this guy or I'm going to get 12 and 5 out of this guy. I can sort of count on that. But when you're when you're inconsistent, it's hard to really formulate what you want to try to do. So you sort of wait till the night of and, you know, and, and, and work on the fly there uh, as opposed to maybe planning as much. So, you know, that's, that's another Another thing we've continued has been elusive to us as well is, is that consistency. But he is a uh, that, that UTEP game. I thought it was as good as he's been all year long, and and more that you know that's sort of the Austin we expected to have. Uh, and so it, it was good to see that come back for him. And a guy who's been a little more consistent, Andrew White. You know, uh, we we talked about just uh, what might have been uh, the injury to him and, and missing him a few games, and and you see uh, averaging you know 25 and 21, uh, 23 points over the last two games, and, and you're leading scoring conference play he's really stepped up for you guys he has and he t he's not afraid to take big shots for us he's not he wants the ball in his hands when it comes time to make a play you know he, he made the play the other night that put us ahead by two he got to the line got a three you know, traditional three-point play and and put us up by two uh so as long as he you know the, the he, he cost himself and it was some foul trouble maybe in a utip game uh, that sort of took – he had such a great start. He had 17 in the first half, but then only had four, you know, in the second half or so. And, and a lot of it was because of his foul trouble. And that fourth foul took him out of the game for a long period of time. So we weren't able to utilize him like we needed to in the second half. So it, as long as he stays away from cheap fouls, and he did that the other day against San Antonio, put himself in a better position uh, without fouling, uh, and it made some crucial plays for us. But you, all of a sudden you, you lose him for four games. You know, he doesn't play in the games where he's got the thumb injury, doesn't play in the game where he's got the concussions. And, and, and those are games that are, you know, sort of equal – uh, in terms of who you're playing against, even the last second half against MTSU, you know it's a it's a three point game. He hadn't played the whole second half, so if we got our full complement of guys, you feel better about you know our opportunity to a stretch. You know what the you, you talked about Andre and White going into the game on Saturday, he scored 25 points in that game against UTSA. He was 33 away from a thousand, so he's only eight now short of a thousand. And um, if he has his typical type of game, it's it's going to be a number that he passes on, on Thursday against Western Kentucky, and you know the most recent nighter to get a thousand. And um, in this game, that's a, it's a big accomplishment. It is, and he and John both have been uh, uh, guys from the beginning when they started our, our tenure here. When I when I came in with with coach and all our staff that's here now. Uh, uh, are guys that sort of help lay a foundation for us, and they've been uh, great role models off the floor. They've done what they're supposed to do on the floor. Uh, you know, the, I'd like for them to be able to experience more success as a team, but individually they've done some great things for us. And Andrew is a guy that, you know, came in here as a not much regarded as a scorer, more regarded as a defender, ended up being one of the best – you know, three-point shooters we've had here in a while. So uh, really proud of how he's worked to get better, worked to get stronger. Uh, and both those guys are doing the right things both on and off the floor, and they're guys that we're proud to call Niners. You mentioned the drive you had, too, that uh, put the Niners up late in the game. Um, that, was a, that was a situation on Saturday. You guys had a lot of success going inside. You had 40 points in the paint plus the 19 at the free throw line. So, uh, you know, 59 of, uh, of your points came where you really like to see a lot of that inside the paint at the line. Uh, did a lot of good things. Well, you and I talked, too, about getting, getting to the free throw line. We got the free throw line 26 times in, uh, in each of our last two games. Now, uh, if we make just a couple more of those, it, it helps us out immensely too, especially in the UTIP game. But just to get those free throw attempts, you know, it gives you an opportunity. You know, you're staying aggressive because you're attacking the rim a little bit. It gives you a chance to sort of, when you've got a, a smaller, shorter bench, a chance to rest a little bit on the free throw line. And it also helps you get your defense set. 
you know, so we're not playing transition defense from, from free throws very much. So uh, there's a lot of advantages to getting to the free throw line, and they've taken that to heart in terms of, you know, our goal is to get there at least 25 or 26 times a game. We've met that goal uh, the last two games. And then going on the road, we did that because we're having a tough time scoring. Now that we've gotten that, you know, we're averaging 86, 87 a game in our last couple of games, and a lot of that's a result of getting to the free throw line. Also 21 second chance points uh, because of the, the rebounds. You had 18 offensive rebounds uh, in the game against UTSA as well, 38 for the game plus plus eight in that department. That was a number. When you, when you went into the game, you, you would have been happy plus eight, plus ten, because you know UTEP's not, or UTSA is not a great rebounding team, uh, but still you gotta, you got to execute. Right, exactly. And, and those things are things that are keeping us in games right now. You take a look at the stat sheets from, you know, I know you can analyze statistical and you can massage it how you want to to, to make it feel make you feel better, but you can look at the things we've done statistically in the last couple of games, and for all intent and purposes, we won the majority of the, of the stats that matter. Uh, the, the one that matters the most is winning the game. We haven't found a way to do that down the stretch and that's a way we've got to you know we've got to move forward is, is making sure we you know learn how to win those games down the stretch because we've out rebounded the last two opponents we've been in double figures and assists which we hadn't been very frequently this year we shot the, we, we hit 21 threes in the last two games which is it'll take a whole lot more than you know to the two games to put that together for us over the course of the season uh we our field goal percentage has been up uh, you know, we, we didn't. We gave up too many layups. I felt like in, in both games, defensively, we gave up too many shots around the rim. Uh, but at, at the same time, we also had some critical stops. When we got down, we had to get stops to get back in, in the game. It wasn't just about scoring. So we did get some stops when it mattered during the course of the game. So that's growth too. Uh, but we just got to find a way to win those things down the stretch. And we're we're standing, like I say, we're standing at uh, at, at the. Uh, uh, position where we can win those things we're on the free throw line or we need a rebound or we need to stop and, and the game's over with so it, it's that close and we're right on the edge of that so uh, I, i'm encouraged about getting back in practice today and seeing how these guys are going to come to work yeah. Great opportunities this week, going to Western Kentucky, going to Marshall, two teams that are in the top four in the league. Western, they're trying to they're trying to win the regular season, so it's a great chance for us to go and you know kind of mess up their plans a little bit and to have some success on the road. We'll take a timeout. Got a lot coming up in this hour. Uh, Colby Lewis will be a guest, but uh, coming up next, we'll give Coach a break and uh, bring in freshman Luka Vosic coming off his first double-double as a 49er. Had a great game against UTSA, 13 points, 11 rebounds. That's coming up next. This is Goldmine Live on the Charlotte IMG Sports Network. Okay, it's Ford Truck Month, and here's how it works. You take F-150 Motor Trends Truck of the Year, work in best-in-class towing and payload, sweeten up the offer, and boom. Look who just saved a stack of cash. Step on its board. Drive home America's best-selling truck 41 years straight. Ford Truck Month is here. It's buy now time, people. Right now, get a 2018 F-150 with $10,459 in total savings. Plus, with your trade-in, get 1,000 trade assist cash. Only at your Carolina Ford dealer. Sophie, his 13th birthday. Gift, we've got you. Guitar, coming tomorrow. Road game today, surprise party tomorrow. Uh, change of plans. Game tomorrow. No, birthday tomorrow. Hotel, hotel. Guitar, reroute. Birthdays are on birthdays. Party, relocate. UPS My Choice makes rerouting packages easy. Wow. How we're helping companies solve for the needs of customers like Sophie. Welcome back to Goldmine Live here at the Student Union today, talking Niner basketball until the top of the hour. And our special guest right now is freshman Luka Vasic, one of our two freshmen this season from Serbia. And uh, Luka, it's been fun to watch you play all season long. And uh, thanks for taking some time today to come and uh, visit and talk a little basketball. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing pretty well. Tell us about uh, the last few weeks for you because it's kind of that, that next man up mentality when somebody gets hurt. You've been, you've been you know, vying your time to get some some playing time some extended playing time and and you're you're getting more now and, and taking advantage of that first double double on saturday with 13 points and 11 rebounds but it wasn't just that game it, you know you go back two three games you're starting to play with a lot more confidence i mean yeah it's all about like staying locked in uh either in, in practice or during the game stay with the team and like uh chances are here it's like it's all about like taking them and taking advantage as you said taking advantage of the, of the chances that are given to you and uh, I feel like uh, I kind of used my chances like pretty well the last the last few weeks, as you said. Uh, the first triple double the last game, uh, double double the last game against uh, UTSA. I was kind of feel confident right now, like uh, going to the games 
uh, that they're coming. You know, the points are great. You had 13 points, but we were really impressed with just the energy you brought from the opening tip. You started the game, and, and it seemed like every rebound that was out there, you wanted to get. I mean, you were all over the place. I mean, yeah, that uh, when I first first came here in August, uh, that was like like kind of famous for uh, like that energy that I was bringing the, on the court, and like everybody like kind of kind of want me to to do that like during the season. And I was like, I was like, I felt like I have to like give even more because uh, like the first part of the season, I was like, I don't even know how to explain that feeling. I was I wasn't that ready as I'm now. And like I'm trying to to give my best and to like to bring that energy that we need like in every every single game. You know, taking that step to college, what was that like for you? Because you know, some folks say the game's a little bit more faster. Uh, I'm trying to figure out you know how to play the style. Also coming from Europe, it's different. So there was a lot of things you had to get used to. Uh, yeah, that's true. I went to a lot of diversity last last two years because in Serbia the last year I was playing a point guard. And then the last season in uh, down there in Connecticut, I was playing the stretch four because we didn't have like enough of big players. So I was playing kind of stretch four. And then right now I was playing, I'm playing like point guard, I mean a shooting guard and, and a small forward, even a power forward a little bit. And uh, as you said, uh, the game pace and the game physicality is, is kind of is kind of like uh, different down there in Europe. And then here, I felt like uh, you have to like to decide uh, kind of faster uh, right here as coach will be telling me that's like 0.5 seconds to decide and then you're done if you didn't decide pass the ball <laughs> <laughs> that's what be telling me all the time so that look uh, you uh so you you know you talked about playing the different positions and so forth and uh early on it looked like you were playing a lot of power forward they kind of you know were trying to use you as a stretch four coach fancher more recently you're playing at the three you mentioned playing point guard a year ago where are you most comfortable where do you see yourself playing best Oof. Uh, I personally feel like uh, I'm the most comfortable at, at that stretch four because I'm like six eight, can shoot the ball, can rebound really well. I feel like uh, I'm, I'm feeling most confident in the in the playing stretch four. You've made some threes recently. Had two this last game, four against uh, UTEP last Thursday. Um, is that still something you want to work on on the off season? Work on your shot, uh, try to be more yeah, consistent. Yeah, I was trying to be to be as efficient as I can uh, making those shots in the game and I was kind of as I said I was kind of disappointed with that shot with that air ball uh, in the uh, against the Sounder Missouri that ball didn't even touch the glass I was like that's not my shot then I was in the gym for the for a whole week uh, putting up some shots uh, even from the dribble even from the from the cuts that I felt like I was confident uh, going into those those two home games I started the uh, the game against uh, UTEP four from four from three point line. I was I was really I was really confident. So we talked uh, with uh, Milos last week, and uh, he talked about the influence of Peja Stojakovic, and uh, we talked about just uh, the uh, you know the strength of Serbian basketball in general. Um, and I know from personal experience, you know how how great uh, the the school and and just the training that you guys get over there. Uh, who's somebody maybe that you looked up to, or, or you try to model your game after? Was it somebody oh. homegrown, or was it somebody in the NBA, maybe an American player? Oh, uh, I would say. I would say Kawhi Leonard, because he's being all over the, the court. I mean, he's rebounding the ball, he's passing the ball, he's shooting the ball, he's playing nice, really nice defense, and he can guard from f really from from point guard to to like power forward. That was kind of kind of one of uh, kind of one of my model my game as he played. That's like that's like my even my favorite player in the in the league right now. Talking to Luka Vasic, one of our freshmen this season, and it's got to be good for you. I mean, you were in Connecticut. Uh, recently playing in, in prep ball, so it's not totally new to you to be out of the, um, your native Serbia, but to have a, a, a native countryman with you here in Milo Supica plus uh, our assistant coach Evo, that's got to be some kind of a, of a comfort level for you. Uh, that's true. Even down there in Connecticut, my two friends, uh, David and Philip, was with me in the same team. Uh, Philip was injured during the whole season. I mean, he played like four or five games, but he was injured like for the most part of the season. And uh, of course, it's like it's really nice when you have something like from from your uh, I mean home country with you in like in the states. It's like really nice feeling, really nice. Really enjoy all all the guys that I met. We have uh, we only have a guy from Serbia in our track team, Stevan, and I really enjoy spending time with Milos and Stevan. 
How's the adjustment been for you with class, uh, you know, doing school in a, in a second oh. language? I know it has to be challenging as well, but uh, how's the adjustment been for you? I mean, during my, during my uh, high school career, my GPA was 4.0, so I didn't have, like, any, like, big problems with the, with the school and all the stuff. It's going pretty well. So what are you studying? I, mean, I know you want to play basketball as long as you can, but outside of that, what, what's, uh, uh, what's on your plate in terms of studies? Uh, currently, I'm in, uh, I'm pre-business major. But in uh, uh, junior year, I would decide to to go. I mean, to to choose a finance major. You got four games left in the regular season. Uh, you're taking them. I know one game at a time. But tell us about this road trip. It's a, it's a it's a rematch. You play Western Kentucky and Marshall, two teams that came here uh, already this season. So, what are you looking forward to this week about to trying to get a couple of wins in the road? I mean, we're uh, we're we're playing uh, really nice teams, uh, Western Kentucky probably the best rebounding team in our league and then Marshall uh, I would say the best scoring team in our league it's gonna be tough I, I can say I mean I would say it's gonna be tough but we will try to get those those two wins on the, on the road Luka thanks so much great weekend for you congratulations on that first double double first of many to come I'm sure as a 49er good luck this week and we'll talk to you again soon thanks so much look at Vasic has been our guest uh, we'll come back with Colby Lewis Niners assistant coach of course Colby played four years for the Niners and has been on the staff now for a while we'll talk to Colby coming up in a moment this is Goldmine Live on the Charlotte IMG Sports Network Okay, it's Ford Truck Month, and here's how it works. You take F-150 Motor Trends Truck of the Year, work in best-in-class towing and payload, sweeten up the offer, and boom, look who just saved a stack of cash. Step on its board, drive home America's best-selling truck 41 years straight. Ford Truck Month this year. It's buy now time, people. Right now, get a 2018 F-150 with 10459 in total savings, plus with your trade-in, get 1,000 trade assist cash, only at your Carolina Ford dealer. Sophie, his 13th birthday. Gift, we've got you. Guitar, coming tomorrow. Road game today, surprise party tomorrow. Uh, change of plans. Game tomorrow. No, birthday tomorrow. Hotel, hotel. Guitar, reroute. Birthdays are on birthdays. Party, relocate. UPS My Choice makes rerouting packages easy. Wow. How we're helping companies solve for the needs of customers like Sophie. Welcome back to Goldmine Live, and uh, special guest right now, Colby Lewis. Played here four years, and now fifth year on the uh, Niners coach, coaching staff, and another Statesville guy. Good to see you, Colby. It's good to see you. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Um, you know what? You and I did a, a pregame interview, man, about almost two months ago. It was yeah. like six, seven minutes, and all of a sudden something happened during the pregame show, and we ran out of time. We didn't play it, so we can redo it right now. <laughs> all right, sounds good. <laughs> you know, uh, you know it, it has been five years now for you uh, on staff, and, and time does fly. And uh, what's, what's it been like for you? You've had multiple roles, yeah. and, and now in the kind of video scouting type of role, uh, one that I know you enjoy. But um, tell us about – how this has uh, come about for you, and, and your brother's now a coach, so it's in the family blood. Your dad's a coach. And you guys just love basketball. Yeah, um, so just last five years, I mean, you know, went from being a grad assistant and then helped out with operations now to video, and uh, it's just, you know, each role is different, but, you know, it's for me, it's like I want to get into coaching and I want to be an assistant coach one day, and it's just a way to, like, learn every single role um, throughout the basketball program and, and figure out, you know, that way, once that one day, if I ever have the opportunity to be a head coach, then I, I understand, you know, all the ins and outs about a program and what it takes and what each person is responsible for and how to delegate things and stuff like that. I think, you know, when you take that next step, whenever that happens to be, you look at your resume, it's going to be interesting because it, it's, a, it's a great resume in that you've been able to do all this right around here at home. Mm -hmm. and, and I know how big your family is to you uh, to get to stay around here and spend so much time. But you've learned from other people, not yeah. just one coaching staff. And there's, there's positives and negatives you know, of what's happened over the years. But you've had a chance to take up and learn from a lot of different guys that have some great basketball knowledge. Yeah. It, you know, it's crazy. It's like, for me, it's, it's a lot different than a lot of other people who do this profession. Uh, most people get the, you know, they're having to move all around the place. And, um, you know, me, I love Charlotte and I love being here. And, you know, hopefully I have the opportunity to continue my career here and, you know, keep building and keep building and um but you know for for me it's like you know i worked with major and price and fancher and all these guys and you know each person has something different that they bring to the table and something that you know as i'm building my philosophy and how i want to one day coach 
you know, I can pick different things from different guys and, and see what I really like. And some things I might change, but some things I might roll with and go that way with it, you know. So it's, it's, been, it's been a blessing to have an opportunity to do it here at a place that's special to me and then, you know, learn and, and build a network with, a, you know, a group of different people with each staff. Kobe talked about your your brother and uh, he's into coaching, but your dad uh, is dominating the high school scene now. Yeah. And uh, just talk about kind of the the growth of his business and uh, and just maybe had the influence that's had on you as well. Yeah, so uh, probably it was like once I started going to college, he you know he had already he had always done camps and stuff for you know kids, and then I think once Tyler started to be like an upperclassman, that's when he started to really focus in on the scouting service and. You know, there were some other people in North Carolina that did a few, you know, top camps around the area, and they, they kind of, you know, either retired or moved on. And, you know, he just kind of filled that void, and he's just been able to, like, build it, you know, more each year, um, doing, you know, North Carolina top 80s. Um, so it's like the top 80 kids in North Carolina. Uh, he did one for, in South Carolina. He's done one in you know, Indi yeah, Indiana and Virginia. So he's just doing it all over the place. But really down here in the southeast, is, he really crushes it. And, you know, the last, you know, five, six years or so, he's, you know, really built, you know, he he built that scouting service and then he was able to, you know, kind of venture into doing AAU tournaments and, and really putting on some really good quality competition uh, during the summer and spring live events for college coaches to go watch. So. You had a really interesting offseason kind of staying with that, that family theme. As your, your brother now, Tyler, is an assistant coach over at Furman, yep. and they're having a great year. But he finished up his playing career at Butler last year uh, and wanted to get into coaching. You're already in coaching. Um, you, you both, though, decided right before summertime to get married. And you always had this little inner competition. <laughs> Someone had to go first. It was in weeks, within weeks of each yeah. other you both got married. Yeah, he, he got married. Yeah, it was like three weeks after me. So it was crazy for my parents and everything, just the – so many different things going on during the summer, um, but we had a good time with it. And you know, I know he's he's doing a really good job down there at Furman, and they're having a really good season. Uh, I think they're second or third in the uh, SoCon. Um, they've had a really good season, and you know, hopefully they can, you know, win their conference tournament and make a you know go to the NCAA tournament. You know, when uh, he was coming up, I know you always were watching him in Poland when he started NC State, went over to Butler, um, had some good seasons with the Bulldogs. But you always felt like if it came into a shooting contest, just just flat out shooting, you could outshoot him, right? Oh yeah, for sure. But now nah, he he was a great player. He he really understood the game and could see it as a point guard, just being able to like had a really good feel for the game and kind of saw plays before they happened. But yeah, if it was just catching and shooting, then uh, I'd take him. Kobe, I know it's been a it's been a tough year on you guys, and uh, you guys have, have battled through a lot. But um, you know, what's it been like to lose your roommate on the road, man? How's that been for you? <laughs> I miss it, you know, because so if anybody doesn't know, when we would travel, Joby was my roommate, and it was great because you know we'd get done with games, and you know you're hearing that you know as a staff you're always together, but then it was always good to go back to the room and just as I'm sitting there cutting up the film and stuff, me and, and Joby sitting there watching it with me, and it was really good to get his perspective on you know, the game, especially after having a really great year. I mean, career here at Charlotte and then playing 13, 14 years overseas. And he's, he's a great basketball mind, so I always like to, you know, pick his brain on some things. I think you pulled the ex-player card on me at Oklahoma State because, you know, the first night at Oklahoma State in Stillwater, Joby's my roommate for the first time <laughs> ever. Okay, a little different, right? We, we fly out the next day out of uh, out of uh, Oklahoma City and we check in that night and all of a sudden he's not my roommate anymore. You pulled it back. <laughs> I miss them, you know. It's <laughs> I miss being with you guys. So, <laughs> so uh, we got a couple of uh, – got one more trip coming up. Uh, then we come back home for a couple of games against the Florida schools. You know, looking at this team, you, you do the scouts. You uh, do all the video uh, to prepare the coaching staff and the players for the next game. What are you going to do this week to get a couple of wins? You know, Western Kentucky, um, you know, they're very talented. I thought last time we, we played them really well. Uh, we got to make sure we get back in transition. They really like to run the ball. Um, so we just we got to make sure we get first-time rebounds. They're a really good rebounding team. They have those two guys inside that can really uh, rebound the basketball. So we just got to make sure we get first-time rebounds. Maybe we can push it out on them. They don't do a great job of getting back in transition. Um, and then, you know, with their guard play, they're, they're pretty – you know, they're really good. They got the kid, uh, Darius Thompson, the point guard. So we got to do a good job shutting him down and just making it difficult for him all night. Um, and then inside, just containing those two post players would be, you know, a very – a big key to the game. 
It's been about a month before we let you go. It's been about a month since we had an update on the manager's team. Yeah. And uh, the number one ranking, and you're a big reason why. Uh-huh. Um, the game at James Madison, I heard you went for almost 60. I mean, it was just a huge number. <laughs> but uh, so what's been up? You guys, have you played lately? We ha- no, we haven't played too much during conference. I think we've played like twice during this, the conference play. It's just – you know, you're on the road, and some schools might not have enough players, and then some. You know, we get busy doing things. You know, just with we might be showing film or doing something with our team and taking them out to dinner, or you know, just whatever it might be. And it's just hard to try to find time for the other teams, coaches. Well, you staff played Marshall staff last to, year, I think. So we did. We got a trip coming up to Marshall this week. Yeah, maybe they'll play. I think last year they had Chris Duhon, and that, that was fun to play against him. <laughs> so I asked assistant coach Tanner Smith a couple of weeks ago, so uh, help me understand uh, this is a, a manager game, and you're yeah. an assistant coach. So what are the criteria for who gets to play in these games? It's just anybody who's not a player. <laughs> oh, okay. not, on the, not on the team. So, you know, we have – I guess when we go on the road, we have two managers and three guys on staff. <laughs> <laughs> but some schools that we play against, they'll, they'll play with their, a couple of their staff members. And so I guess that makes it a little even. Uh, it's always fun. Hey, Colby, thanks so much. Appreciate oh, thanks for having it. me. Uh, great seeing you again. Have a great uh, great rest of the season. Yes, sir. Colby Lewis, our guest. We'll take a time out, come back, bring Houston Fancher back up here and talk about what's coming up this week at Western Kentucky on Thursday. Then we swing over to Huntington, West Virginia, take on the Marshall Thundering Herd on Saturday. This is Goldmine Live on the Charlotte IMG Sports Network. Okay, it's Ford Truck Month, and here's how it works. You take F-150, Motor Trends Truck of the Year, work in best-in-class towing and payload, sweeten up the offer, and boom, look who just saved a stack of cash. Step on its board, drive home America's best-selling truck 41 years straight. Ford Truck Month is here. It's buy now time, people. Right now, get a 2018 F-150 with $10,459 in total savings, plus with your trade-in, get 1,000 trade assist cash, only at your Carolina Ford dealer. Sophie, his 13th birthday. Gift, we've got you. Guitar, coming tomorrow. Road game today, surprise party tomorrow. Uh, change of plans. Game tomorrow. No, birthday tomorrow. Hotel, hotel. Guitar, reroute. Birthdays are on birthdays. Party, relocate. UPS My Choice makes rerouting packages easy. Wow. How we're helping companies solve for the needs of customers like Sophie. Welcome back to Goldmine Live here at the Student Union. I want to thank Colby Lewis and Luca Vosic for joining us this week. And uh, don't forget, coming up on Thursday, we're at Western Kentucky. And catch all the coverage uh, starting with the pregame show here on the Charlotte IMG Sports Network. Joby Thomas, Matt Swarad back with head coach Houston Fancher now. And uh, coach just had a chance to spend some time with Colby Lewis. And you got to know Colby for a while, but, but you probably knew his dad uh, before you ever met Colby uh, years ago. Um, in the high school scene and just a, a great basketball family. He's a great guy. He is. It's a superstar family uh, from top to bottom, and starting with Rick and the service he does for all the kids across the state. He's expanded into multiple states now. The, the, the opportunities and the uh, uh, exposure he's provided for so many high school kids across the state and across the southeast is immeasurable. Uh, but he does a terrific job with his evaluations and with his staff and, and the tournaments they run or uh, provide a lot of opportunity for kids. And then Kobe and Tyler are both just are just fantastic. Uh, you know, obviously having Kobe here with us, he's going to be a, a superstar in, uh, in this profession one day. He's detail oriented, uh, very conscientious, and just he, he he never stops. He just he's he's, like, he's the energizer bunny that keeps going and going and going. And every detail is a detail to him. It's not one that he sets aside for later work. He gets after it immediately. And any assignment you give him, uh, he's like Radar O'Reilly was on Mash back in the day that he sort of got things done before you even tell him to do it. Sometimes so. Uh, uh, he, he's fantastic, as all our other guys are, Patrick Corrigan and, and, and Tanner Smith and everybody that's in our program right now. I'm excited about their future as coaches and what they can become because they are so driven. Uh, they're so motivated in what they're trying to do and what they want to become uh, that they continue to work hard every day. And it's easy, you know, it would be easy for guys that uh, are new in a profession to get discouraged, you know, when they're dealing with sort of what we're dealing with right now, but they don't. They come back in with smiles on their faces and, and they work hard. They breathe life into these kids uh, and Kobe and Pat and, and and Tanner are all three great examples of that. I think, you know, most people don't realize how difficult it is to break into this profession 
And when you do break in, you're not making a lot of money. It's not these big salaries that a lot of the, the, the headline coaches around the country make. It, it, it's just, you know, kind of scraping by. But it's guys that love the game. And this staff that you have, these young guys, they, they love being in the gym, as you mentioned, love helping the kids. Uh, but getting that next break, it's not always easy. It's not. And, and once you get to the point where you turn the corner and realize why you do it, you know, and if you do it for money, you did it for the wrong reason, especially starting out. I remember my first, I guess my first three years, I made $10,000 a year and, and uh, uh, lived on Spam and Taco Bell. Uh, and slept in a lot of locker rooms, uh, and then even moving up into the, you know, the next level. I worked at Vanderbilt, made twelve thousand dollars a year working at Vanderbilt, because that was back when it was restricted earnings at the time. So, you, you find out if you really love it at those first couple of years, because you don't. If you love it more than you love eating, uh, and love it more than you love sleeping, then you'll find out, because you do both those things. You do this a lot more than you do eating and sleeping. I can tell you that. So, uh, you, you do find that out early. But these these guys are in a super situation. Charlotte provides good resources for everybody on our staff. But as you're right, as you're continuing to work your way up. You learn more about the responsibilities and the thing go along with it and find if it's really what you want to do. Uh, people on the outside looking in think, man, I'd love to do what they do. But once they get behind the walls, it's not for everybody. I've had some former professional guys work with me uh, in the past that got in there like, whoa, I didn't realize this was all involved like this. And, and it's, not, it's not for everybody. Just like playing overseas is not for everybody. Uh, it, it, you got to be built for that type of stuff. you got to be made for that type of stuff. you got to have the right motivation and right drive to get you through some tough times. Where you found found your love of Cracker Barrel and probably uh, Waffle yeah. House. So I, I got to trans take that into uh, your, your your birthday dinner uh, on Saturday night. It was Waffle House. How was it? Well, we, we ended up backing out of that, too, because it became a little bit too late. Oh, man. Uh, so we turned it in for a Taco Bell lunch the next day. <laughs> uh, but, you know, one thing I found out was great about that. I thought I had to be the only person in the country that had a Taco, I mean, a, uh, a Cracker Barrel Christmas ornament. My wife would be embarrassed <laughs> if I said that uh, in front of a lot of people. I kind of find out our trainer, Adam Jordan, has one, too. So we're kindred spirits. I didn't realize that until after the game that, that he also has. <laughs> I'm not too proud of that, but it is true. He has a Cracker Barrel Christmas ornament that uh, he hangs on a secondary tree in his house. <laughs> I'm just impressed Kathy lets you put it on a tree. <laughs> yeah, I she, never go for it. Well, she, she, that's one of the things she gave in to when we got married a long time ago, that I was a Cracker Barrel guy. I've, got, I've still got a map. You know, on our road trips, you know, during the past, we'd get on the, on the bus, and there's a lot more bus travel than it was uh, road tra I mean, air travel than it is in now. And uh, at the front of the bus, I'd always pop out my map, and, and uh, everybody on the back would start moaning and groaning, and <laughs> here comes the Cracker Barrel. Where's the nearest Cracker Barrel? Let's pull in. Let's go eat. I'm sure there's one at Western Kentucky. You've got, we've got <laughs> Bowling Green coming up on, on Thursday. Western Kentucky, uh, you know, really good team. If the season ended today, they might find themselves in, in the NCAA tournament as an at-large. Uh, they've, they've played that well. They beat Purdue early this season. And unfortunately for teams like Western, trying to one of those bubble teams, you need those teams that you beat to just keep rolling. And Purdue's taken a couple of close ones on the chin lately. Uh, but still a great resume they've built up. They have, and they've made their way with transfers. They've done it, you know, Coach Stansbury's first couple of years, they brought in some really talented kids. And, you know, Colby on the inside is a transfer from Kansas that, you know, averaged one point a game at Kansas, comes here and averages about 13 and nine a game. And Darius Thompson's a Another all-caliber, all all-conference caliber player uh, at the point guard position. He's averaged around 15 and six or seven assists a game. A transfer from Virginia. Lamonte Bearden on the perimeter that, that bothered us last time. A transfer from Buffalo. You know, so they've got a lot of transfers, a lot of grown-ups uh, on the roster to play a lot of minutes. And uh, as far as talent's concerned, they may be the most individually talented team in our league. And uh, when they came in here last time, I thought we guarded them about as well as we guarded anybody. You know, that game's 28 to 20 at halftime, and we've held them to 28 points. We didn't score well. Uh, hopefully, now that we're scoring a little bit better we can take advantage of that uh, on the offensive end but I thought as far as a defensive game plan you know coach Gray and our staff have put together a, a good defensive plan against them uh, and, and guarded them pretty well so the key for them is going to be rebounding the basketball I mean they really rebound it with a with a passion and uh, we knew that coming into the game Justin Johnson and, and Colby both on the inside they had 26 rebounds combined uh, between the two of them in the last game they ended up rebounding us by about 12 but we competed with them but those two guys are, are instrumental when it comes to rebounding the ball. Westerns won four straight, six of seven, and uh, one of the best home teams in Conference USA right now uh, with a record of 11-3 and three at EA Diddle Arena. That's our next opponent coming up on Thursday. We'll take a timeout. Still more to come with head coach Houston Fancher. This is Goldmine Live on the Charlotte IMG Sports Network. Okay, it's Ford Truck Month, and here's how it works. You take F-150 Motor Trends Truck of the Year, work in best-in-class towing and payload, sweeten up the offer, and boom. Look who just saved a stack of cash. Step on its board. Drive home America's best-selling truck 41 years straight. Ford Truck Month this year. It's buy now time, people. Right now, get a 2018 F-150 with $10,459 in total savings. Plus, with your trade-in, get 1,000 trade assist cash. Only at your Carolina Ford dealer. 
Sophie, his 13th birthday. Gift, we've got you. Guitar, coming tomorrow. Road game today, surprise party tomorrow. Uh, change of plans. Game tomorrow. No, birthday tomorrow. Oh no, oh no! Guitar, reroute. Birthdays are on birthdays. Party, relocate. UPS My Choice makes rerouting packages easy. Wow. How we're helping companies solve for the needs of customers like Sophie. Welcome back to Goldmine Live with head coach Houston Fancher. The Niners uh, this week at Western Kentucky on Thursday and uh, then over to Marshall for a game on Saturday. Want to take a quick moment, though, to congratulate the men's uh, indoor track and field team. They won the Conference USA Championship this weekend. Great accomplishment going in there and getting the, the league title. So congratulations to the uh, men's track and field team. And how about uh, the Niners women's basketball team? Coach Consuegra, uh, her crew has now won five games in a row. They're 8-4 and four in Conference USA and uh, getting hot at the right time. The baseball team started their season this uh, weekend at home against Iona, swept a three-game series against the Gales uh, here at Hayes Stadium. So congratulations to the baseball Niners. And the softball team went 3-1 and one this weekend as well. So really nice weekend uh, for the Niners on all those different playing fields and uh, courts. So, Coach, as, as you look at uh, – the basketball scene, the way it's playing out, we've talked so much with uh, Coach Consuegra this year about that early schedule she put together and uh, all those tough games and felt like in the end it would pay off. There were some really close losses against some really good national teams, and it seems like that's what's happening. They're coming together as a group. They're now eight and four. They've won five in a row. I talked to her this morning when we were, we were both coming in, and she's done a she's done a fantastic job of stay in the course with her team and you know they just continue to get better game after game and they continue to play hard and well she's really pleased with it, how well they're defending she just she felt they you know they go to UAB who's a you know a borderline top 25 team right now as well and win this weekend and they've always had historically had trouble with UAB and she said they just walked in with a confidence and and a lot of that was built on their defensive presence and that's that's uh that's that's great for them you know because that travels defense travels obviously doesn't always travel with you but you can take your defense just about everywhere and and uh and and they've done that now so uh, they've got to big game against Western Kentucky coming up. That's a big one for them. And uh, they put themselves right in the mix here, uh, headed down the stretch. We talked about uh, this Western game coming up on Thursday for us, and you talk about defense travel. It's going to be really difficult with, with this matchup because you want to stay out of foul trouble. You know, we're not really – deep in terms of having more bodies to bring into games now. And this is a team that's going to get really physical with you. It is. And, you know, last time, if you remember, Jalen Haslam had 12 rebounds when we played him last time and played 35 minutes against him last time. So he was a factor in that game down there, the way he rebounded the basketball. He's going to have to do that for us as well. And then Milos, uh, uh, Milos and, and Najee are both going to have to rebound the ball. Najee had nine rebounds in our game against San Antonio on Saturday and drew a couple big charges on the defensive end. So you, you got to pick and choose where you make your contributions. But those guys can have impacts on the game without scoring. Uh, you know, the way they defend down there, I think we held Justin Johnson to like eight points last time we played again. That was between Najee and Milos doing a good job on him too and, and uh, forced him into five turnovers as well. So you take their best guy out of it and force some other guys to have to beat you and make plays. And we talked about how talented they are. So they got some other guys that are capable of that. But you got to force those guys to do that. I think, you know, UTEP did a good job of trying to take John out of the game Thursday and force some other people to, to beat you along the way. Uh, and, and that's one thing we got to make sure we conscious on this weekend is when we play West Kentucky anyway, when you go to Marshall, they've got so many scoring weapons as well. Uh, you sort of have to pick your poison. Yeah, Marshall, contrasting styles really. You certainly aren't looking past Western, difficult game, take it one game at a time. But uh, just talk about, you know, the guard play for Marshall that we know their scoring ability, especially at home. Uh, how do you slow a team like that down? You know what's interesting? We were talking as a staff today. It's it's at the point of the time we start picking your all-conference team and, and looking at players that make it. And we'll, how, how do you go to Marshall and say, well, John Elmore is a, a given all-conference player. Well, C.J. Burks is, is average as many as he is. And, oh, yeah, uh, Penova's averaging, he's leading the shot blocker in the country and averaging about 19 and 6 uh, or 19 and 8 is itself, you know, on the inside. And so they've got a lot of talented weapons on the offensive end. Burks, you know, we did a pretty decent job on, on Elmore in here. And then uh, Burks goes for 32. And then Rondell Watson comes off the bench and goes for 18. So, or maybe even more, might have been 20, I, I think. But uh, it, they've got a lot of talented people on the perimeter. And it's another team we played well. I thought we defended well. We scored, you know, a ball against them. Ended up, I think, being an eight point game when it was all said and done. But they are a talented offensive team team a lot more offense you know their their offense is predicated so much on on quick shots as western kentucky is a little bit more they'll pound it inside a little bit more uh marshall being a more perimeter team likes to drive and attack and transition and you know a penetrate and kick to to shooters on the perimeter but elmore is just so dynamic the way he handles the ball and makes shots and distributes uh, he's a challenge to guard 
it's also going to be one of the uh, the better road trips in terms of playing in front of, of a crowd. The last couple of times you've been on the road, the Florida schools and then down to Louisiana, Mississippi, didn't play in front of big crowds. These teams are you know both playing well, so they're drawing anyway on that side. But uh, you know Western's been almost selling their place out at, at EA Diddle, and you know Marshall on a Saturday's gonna have six seven thousand people in there. They're the top two and three teams in the league in attendance right now. The thing I'm encouraged about Matt is the way our guys are competing right now. We're still fifth in the league in attendance at home, and and that's a credit to the people here that are supportive of these guys and how hard they're working. And, and a shout out to all the Niner Nation that's uh, showing up for our games. We had 4,000 in there again Saturday to watch these guys play uh, and getting a lot of just positive feedback from people about the effort these guys are putting in. And, you know, they're wanting to push the door down. They're helping us. They're supporting us. And they're there for us every night. And this, we had a good student crowd the other night as well. So it, it means a lot to our guys to see the people in the stands. And we certainly are going to go into two uh, uh, venues. Uh, you know, they've, they've, they've got a hashtag sellout diddle for Western Kentucky. And they've already sold out a couple this year. I think our, because of where they are in the conference standings, our game and Old Dominion game that we've got coming at are big for them uh, in terms of conference seating uh, going into the tournament. So uh, I don't I expect to see a, a sellout there. And then Marshall always has a great basketball crowd uh, when we go up to Huntington and play. So we're, it'll be good to see how we respond in those environments. You know, it'll be – our guys, you know, as the environments have gotten bigger, seem to respond just a little bit better. And as the challenges have become greater, they've responded just a little bit better. So uh, we'll, we'll certainly find out if that's the case this week. Sure will. And we'll take a break right now. The last one of the show. Come back with a few moments. We'll wrap this one up with head coach Houston Fancher, Niner basketball uh, this week at Western Kentucky and Marshall. Catch all the action on the Charlotte IMG Sports Network. We're back in a moment. This is the Charlotte IMG Sports Network. Okay, it's Ford Truck Month, and here's how it works. You take F-150 Motor Trends Truck of the Year, work in best-in-class towing and payload, sweeten up the offer, and boom, look who just saved a stack of cash. Step on its board, drive home America's best-selling truck 41 years straight. Ford Truck Month this year. It's buy now time, people. Right now, get a 2018 F-150 with 10459 in total savings, plus with your trade-in, get 1000 trade assist cash, only at your Carolina Ford dealer. Sophie, his 13th birthday. Gift, we've got you. Guitar, coming tomorrow. Road game today, surprise party tomorrow. Uh, change of plans. Game tomorrow. No, birthday tomorrow. Hotel, hotel. Guitar, reroute. Birthdays are on birthdays. Party, relocate. UPS My Choice makes rerouting packages easy. Wow. How we're helping companies solve for the needs of customers like Sophie. Welcome back to Goldmine Live, our last segment here in the Student Union this week. The uh, Niners on the road this week, but back home for the last two home games uh, coming up next week. So uh, plan on coming out to see Florida Atlantic and uh, Florida International to finish up uh, the uh, home schedule, plus we'll have Senior Day uh, coming up. So all that uh, to close out the next uh, couple of weeks in Western Kentucky coming up this Thursday. Coach, and one thing we, as we go on to this uh, this swing on the road again, um, you know, it, 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 we've, we know it's been a, it's been a rough year, but kind of building that foundation with this this young group. And Joby and I both said on the post game show yesterday, uh, what Coach Henson has been doing at, at San Antonio, uh, came in. He's in his second year now, and uh, took a, he's got a, a core of three freshmen this season that he's brought in that are really talented. And their future is very bright. And same thing here with some of the young guys that we have here that, that are learning to play through some adversity, what Luka Vosic has done lately. But even Jalen McGill, the last two games, what he's given you on the floor, um, you, you like to see the points and all, but defense and, and not turning the ball over. And that's, that's crucial. And I, you talk about all those guys. You talk about, uh, like you said, Jalen and Luka, but you talk about Milos and the things he's given us. You know, he gave us some uh, good points and rebounds. He had some, you know, big offense rebounds for us early in the game the other day. And, and then Bryant Thomas, of course, has been out as another guy who shows a lot of promise. So, you know, and, and Murph, who, who's, uh, you know, came in and just did some great things for us there during the stretch before he broke his foot, unfortunately. So those are all guys that are freshmen. You know, that are in their first year playing in, in, in college basketball, and you see the growth there. And I think the thing that they're getting hardened with are, are these losses, and they're, they're learning through these things and, and uh, uh, getting the opportunity to be out there and, 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 and compete and contribute uh, early in their freshman year will bode well for them as we move on into the future. So, uh, Najee, of course, is being just a sophomore, and Jalen Haslam, the first year in our program. Uh, so, it, it's great for these guys to be able to get out there and experience some of this right now, and I think it will harden them a little bit as we move forward. 
as you get the next game on the road trip, which is Marshall. I, I just mentioned you off air that it's really great that we've been able to turn the corner and get a little more consistency going on the offensive side, shooting at a higher percentage because when you play the herd, you know they're going to score at least 80 most likely. you gotta, you got to score with them. Sometimes you just got to score with, and, and uh, they, they're so talented offensively that you can't have lulls where you have a, you know, a, a drought for, for four or five minutes. You just can't do that because they'll continue to score uh, regardless of how good you defend them. And, and uh, you know, they're the only team to beat middle uh, in our league this year, so they've shown the ability to beat the best in our league as well. Uh, so we're going to have to make sure we do go in there with the right mindset offensively. Same thing at Western. Uh, we guarded them really well. Like we said, uh, Western the first time, they had 28 points at halftime, but we only had 20. So we're going to have to score better against their zone. We'll see some of that 1-3-1 one, one that they run back to a 2-3, and we're going to have to attack that a little bit better than we did the first time. We got our offense rolling a little bit you know, in the second half. I think we had like 40-some in the second half and got some points going. But we're scoring the ball a whole lot more freely now. The ball's moving a lot better. It's not sticking as much. Uh, it's touching a lot more people's hands, and, and that's what we got to continue to do do as we go on the road here now we scored well at home now we got to go on the road score coach uh you know talking about the scoring one of the things that was encouraging uh watching from um the outside kind of looking in was uh thursday night against utep you guys made 14 threes uh and didn't have but 20 points in the paint um but on saturday night against utsa you guys only made eight threes but had 40 points in the paint so in both games you're in the upper 80s in scoring so you showed not only the ability to live and die by the outside jump shot but to get some points inside and a lot of those were off bounces too joe be attacking attacking off the bounce you know so when they didn't they closed out on the threes we did a good job attacking the paint i thought luca attacked the paint well andrew attacked the paint well jd got downhill some uh, so those guards did a good job of attacking off the bounce some which led to some offense of rebounds because we got the ball to the rim with some short shots, some opportunities to rebound the ball offensively. Uh, and, and, and that being said, we got to the free throw line. You know, and like I said, we, we shot 26 free throws a game in those two games. So those were all opportunities to get us points. Uh, high efficiency points, not just relying on threes, but that, that to show the ability to step out and shoot it. With uh, Austin hitting some big threes, Luca hit some big threes. We had a, a number of guys step up and hit big threes against UTEP. But like you said, we're able to balance that and get scoring on the inside as well. And that's the uh, I think that's what we've got to have going forward in these last four games is to make sure we've got great balance. Well, we want to congratulate also. We have a moment, Middle Tennessee. Uh, Coach Davis doing a great job with the uh, the Blue Raiders. They've won 10 straight, 22-5, and 14-1 in Conference USA right now. And I say congratulate because they, they, they cracked the top 25 in the country uh, this week. Poll came out today uh, in the top 25. That's great for the league as we try to build this league basketball resume. Um, there's a chance of getting multiple teams into the NCAA tournament. That's all great for the league. It is really good for the league, and it, it enhances the brand. And I think our, our, our league RPI has jumped almost 10 points from last year so the strength that some of those teams the year old dominions having the year western kentucky's having you know some of the higher uh, teams in our league have really raised the water for all of us and uh, a lot of that goes back to the to the experience of those teams you know you look at those teams and their team of grown-ups and you gotta you know you keep building a team of course coach davis has set the bar in the league uh, the last couple of years of what he's done at my alma mater and excited for him what he's able to create there and that's what we're wanting to create here you got to establish yourself with these young guys you know you continue to grow them and build them as you move towards the future get into March and maybe they could uh, certainly continue their role in the tournament and, and again help out the league as people start talking about Conference USA basketball going forward. So for us coach give us a couple of keys to a win against Western Kentucky on Thursday night. Well I think keeping a rebound in totals uh, uh, within reach is huge for us. We've got to make sure we do that. Uh, we, we've got to make sure we continue to find ways to get to the free throw line. I think that's critical for us in terms of our scoring the basketball but I also think we've got to play well uh, in both games in defensive transition. You know we can't allow the layups and off the break which we can't make turnovers that lead to layups. You know, it's a turnover or a touchdown. We can't allow those things. So uh, as long as we handle those three areas of the game, I think we'll have an opportunity to be in there late. Sounds great. Coach, thanks so much. Good All luck right. this week. Thank you, guys. Thanks for listening, everybody. I uh, want to thank Luca Vosich, our special player guest, Colby Lewis, for Joby Thomas and Coach Fancher. I'm Matt Swarad. Again, join us uh, Thursday from Bowling Green, Kentucky, as the Niners take on the Hilltoppers uh, in Bowling Green. Until then, so long, everybody.